Hey y'all, it's Joseph Lipper, and today I want to do a quick demo of how to code a six motor drive in Vexcode blocks. Basically, there is an option to do a two motor drivetrain and an option to do a four motor drivetrain, but there's no option for a six motor drivetrain. And that is really frustrating because now you have to do it manually. So I want to make it easy for you and show you exactly how I code my six motor drivetrains in blocks. Now, if you're new to coding, this code might seem a little bit complicated. So if you're confused about what I did in any of these steps, go ahead and click that link in the description below, and I will send you a screenshots of the code, all the details on that, and the description of what I'm doing in the code and why it works the way it does. And if you're still confused, feel free to email me, and I will be happy to answer your questions. So let's get started. Now, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go over to a blank blocks project, and we're going to go ahead and add our devices in the devices menu. The first thing we're going to add is a controller. And once we're done with that, we just need to add our six motors in our devices. But to do this, what we need to do is we need to add them as individual motors using the motor. We can't use the two motor or the four motor drivetrain because we have six motors on our drivetrain. So we have to add them all as individual motors. So how we're going to do this is you just add the motor, add uh, which port it's on, and just name it something reasonable for which motor it is. So this is going to be my first left motor, and you just do the same thing for all six of your motors. All right, now that we've got all of our devices added in, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and go into a control and grab a repeat forever. Now I'm gonna code this in split arcade control. If you want tank control or something like that, it's gonna be a really similar process. You just need to switch around some of the blocks a little bit. Um, basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our variables and we're gonna make two variables. One first, how fast we're gonna spin the left side of our drivetrain and one for how fast we're gonna spin the right side of our drivetrain. Now to do that, all we gotta do is make a variable and we're gonna call this one speed left. And we're gonna make another one called speed right. Now that we've got these two variables made, what we're gonna do, we need to set the variables to how fast we want to make that side of the drivetrain spin. So for our left one, it turns out that if you actually add together your uh, forward backward velocity on your joysticks to your left right velocity on your joysticks, you actually get um, how fast you are actually trying to tell the robot to spin. So what we're gonna do is we are going to go into our operators and grab a plus so we can actually add those two together. And we are going to, if you go into here, you'll see that you can actually grab your controller position. And what this is, is this is just seeing how far you move the joystick and giving you a number from zero to 100 based on that. Um, zero is where the joystick normally sits in the middle, 100 is all the way at the top, negative 100 is all the way at the bottom. Um, and our controller one, uh, position and we're going to add that together with our controller 3 position. And you can see if you're wondering what controller 1 position controller 3 position are, you can see right here controller 1 position is our left right movement on our joystick so that's going to be on our right joystick or left right and up down is number 3 on our left. And so if you'd want tank control you would more refer to number 2. Um, but basically um, how we're going to do this is um, We've got our controller 1 and our controller 3 here on our left speed. All right, now that we've got our speed left in there and all ready to go, we are going to go into our variables and do our speed right. And now for our speed right, it's going to be just the same as the speed left, except for it's going to be pretty much backwards. So what we're going to do here is we are actually going to grab, instead of a plus block from our operators, we're going to grab a minus block. And in this minus block, we are going to, instead of adding these two together, we are going to subtract them. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to do our, if we go up into our controller positions, we can do our controller uh, three position minus our controller one position. And remember that controller three position, controller one position, where controller three was up down there and one is left right there. Um, there's a chance that this might be backwards for you. So depending on how you reverse your motors, you're gonna need to reverse your motors to get your drivetrain all spinning the same way and then to get the two drivetrain sides spinning the correct way relative to each other. So a lot of stuff can get reversed here and it's really hard to get it right on the first try. So it's a lot of trial and error until you can get those right. Um, feel free to email me if you have any questions about that. We have our left speed here and we have our right speed here. Now all we gotta do is spin the motors because we have, we've set our, our uh, 
we've set our velocities and what all we need to do now is actually spin the motors. Now, actually a way that I like to code my robots, I don't like spinning my motors at like percent power because that gives you not very smooth movements on the field compared to what you put in your joysticks. I actually found it is a lot smoother of a movement if you actually control your robot with volts. And that volts, there's actually a block up here in motion and it actually has our uh, volts in it. Um, so basically all we're gonna do is we're gonna use this block right here, um, but we don't, we can't quite use it yet. What we need to do first is we actually have to get these in terms of volts. See, these motors are 12 volts, and what we're gonna get out of here is a number on the scale of zero to 100. So what we're gonna, what we need to do is turn our zero to 100 into a zero to 12 scale. And it turns out if you do 100 divided by 12, uh, you actually get 8.3. And why that's important is what we're going to do here is we're going to grab a division and instead of just putting those straight, our value straight into our motors, we need to divide them by 8.3 to get a number between 0 and 12 when we actually control the robot. So that way we can spin our motor between 0 and 12 volts. So what we need to do here, just put that division in there, put that in one side, and put this 8.3 in the other side. There we go. Now we're going to get a number out of here between 0 and 12 for our left speed and our right speed. And now all we got to do is actually spin the motors. So there's this fancy block down here that will have us spin our motors at a certain amount of volts. Now we don't just want to spin our motor at 10 volts. We want to spin our motor at however many volts this tells us we want to spin it at. That is our speed left volts. So if we just go over here into our speed left, then we can see that this is going to spin it at speed left volts we go up here what is speed left remember a variable is just like like a mailbox like you put the number in and then you can come back later and take it out and it'll still be the exact same number as when you left it and that's useful to have different things talk to each other and you know you you set a variable once and you want to use it like three different places like we're about to do that is really useful for stuff like this so what we're going to do now we have we're spinning our left one motor forward at speed left volts um, and that speed left is just looking at our controller, seeing how fast we actually want the robot to go, divided by 8.3 to get a number between 0 and 12, and we're getting our speed left volts. Now we got to do that for our five other motors. So you can just duplicate this one and to get a whole bunch of those. Um, and so we've got our, these all say left one, so we want our left two and our left three. Now for our right side. Uh, we can duplicate this again. It's going to be a little bit different though. We are going to do our right one motor, but for our right side, we're probably going to need to uh, make our speed right instead of our speed left because it's the right side of our drivetrain. That's going to spin pretty much backwards from the left side of our drivetrain from the motor's perspective. And so now we just can duplicate this. Go ahead and put that in there, duplicate it again, put it in there. Um, and we can change that to make sure we are spinning all of our motors. Um, depending on how you have your drivetrain reversed, you might need to change some of these forwards to backwards. Maybe you'll need to switch the direction of this minus over here, maybe switch with those blocks. Maybe you'll need to reverse some of these motors in here as well. Probably about half of them will need to be reversed. But once we get that all straightened out, this code is good to go. As soon as we do when started, this will spin our drivetrain motors at the voltage that we told them to spin at based on our controller at voltage, um, because voltage drives your robot a lot smoother than a percent. All right, there you have it. This is how you code a six motor drivetrain in Vexcode blocks. This code works. I've used it. I've actually won competitions with code just like this. It really works, and I would really suggest you use it. So make sure you hit that like and subscribe button, and don't forget to click that link down in the description if you want some close-up pictures of this code or more description of how I did it. I'll send you all the details on that, and feel free to email me with any questions, and I will see you in the next video.